The success of Starship Flight 5 is not only a technological pinnacle, but also opens a promising future for the aerospace industry and human space exploration. But wait, not everyone is excited about that. A prime example is the European aerospace sector, which has fallen behind in recent years due to the superior power of SpaceX's rockets. With the success of Flight 5, Europe's dream of competing with SpaceX is becoming increasingly distant, raising concerns about a bleak future ahead. So how did Europe react after Starship Flight 5? Let's find out in today's episode of Great SpaceX. Catching the Super Heavy Booster with the Mechazilla arm and landing the Starship vertically in one flight is an unprecedented feat in history. This achievement serves as a stepping stone toward full reusability, a crucial factor for deep space exploration such as returning to the moon, Mars, and beyond. NASA, more than anyone, is the happiest with this success, as Starship will play a vital role in the Artemis program. However, across the Atlantic, a different mood is emerging in European aerospace agencies and companies. Recently, Rocket Factory Augsburg, or RFA, a prominent European space company, posted, Congratulations to SpaceX. What an incredible feat of engineering. Mars, here we come. At the same time, the coin has a second side. It shows and confirms that Europe has completely lost touch. Can it still catch up? No chance, at least not with the way things are going at the moment. They later added, Europe has ambitious private space players, with innovative ideas, courage, and a vision. Unfortunately, they are being held by the long arm and are in danger of withering away while old structures, processes, and mindsets are maintained. What we need immediately and scientifically are state anchor customers, substantial investments, and a framework that allows and promotes unbureaucratic, fast, and risk-taking development. Otherwise, Europe will quickly sink into insignificance when it comes to the exploration of space, its resources, and its potential. And we leave it to the rest of the world to make history. Just like SpaceX did yesterday, it is up to Europe, up to us. At the International Astronautical Congress 2024, ESA Director General Joseph Oshbacher expressed admiration for Starship Flight 5, but he also raised concerns. What does it mean for Europe? What will be the change in the landscape and the ecosystem, and what do we need to do? He admitted it would be difficult for Europe to compete with Starship, but suggested Europe could benefit from the industry changes Starship brings. He goes on to say, if Starship brings 100 tons into space frequently, this would change everything, how things are constructed and how space is utilized. He also supported RFA's perspective and emphasized that Europe is on the right track but must move full speed ahead. These reactions show that European aerospace agencies and companies recognize SpaceX's superiority. Ambitions to beat Elon Musk's company may have ended before they even started. This isn't just a European issue. When comparing any organization to SpaceX, it's clear there is no chance of surpassing them. SpaceX is demonstrating absolute dominance over any organization in history. Unbeatable might be the most fitting word to describe SpaceX right now. You can comment that word below to spread it further to SpaceX's competitors. Then, like, share, and subscribe to our channel to keep up with SpaceX's journey. Meanwhile, in Europe, a complex mix of factors has contributed to the region's current challenges in the aerospace industry. These range from technological setbacks to organizational inefficiencies and together significantly slowed progress, leaving Europe struggling to keep pace with SpaceX's rapid advancements. Let's start with their rocket for the future, Ariane 6. Developed by ESA and Ariane Group, it was expected to replace Ariane 5 and maintain Europe's autonomy in space launches. However, this rocket has been delayed for many years. Last year, ESA admitted that they had lost the ability to send payloads into orbit. This directly caused Europe to lose its autonomy in space missions. After no longer being able to rely on Russia, Europe had to seek help from SpaceX, the company it once considered a rival and aimed to surpass. After this long period of delay, Europe has finally made some progress with the debut mission of Ariane 6 this year. Although it was declared a success, the flight encountered several issues during the final phase. Therefore, it'll require significant further effort before this rocket can be put into stable operation. In addition to Ariane 6, Europe also has the Vega rocket family. 
However, following the failure of the Vega C version in late 2022, the launch frequency of this rocket line has decreased even further. Combined with the delays of Ariane 6, the Vega program has contributed to Europe facing a launch crisis. The weaknesses of these rockets have caused Europe to lose many valuable launches to SpaceX or to pay high fees for SpaceX rocket launches. A notable example is the Galileo satellite. Previously launched by Soyuz and Ariane 5, Europe had to pay more than 30% above the normal launch price at around $196 million for two Falcon 9 flights to launch these satellite constellation missions. As we know, with SpaceX's support, both missions were successful. Another prominent ESA mission launched by Falcon 9 is Hera. This spacecraft also changed launch vehicles like Galileo, and similarly, this mission was successful. In fact, it was considered a return-to-flight mission for Falcon 9 after delays caused by Crew-9 issues. After the first Ariane 6 mission, there were positive expectations, but it now seems like ESA is still struggling to launch subsequent missions with either rocket. Even if they manage to launch successfully, it'll be difficult to compete with SpaceX's rockets. Looking at the commercial launch market, Europe's future doesn't appear promising either. For instance, RFA, the company that congratulated SpaceX as mentioned earlier, faced a significant setback on August 19th. During a booster test for the RFA-1 rocket, there was a major explosion, resulting in the complete destruction of the prototype and severe damage to the test stand. This failure highlighted the technological challenges faced by the company which has always tried to learn from SpaceX. But success isn't easy. Many companies worldwide, notably in China, have tried to emulate SpaceX, yet most have failed. For RFA, this failure has impacted many of its immediate plans. More importantly, the future of European aerospace appears bleaker than ever. At the same time, SpaceX continues to rapidly expand and strengthen its orbital fleet, showcasing its unmatched capabilities. SpaceX, with its three orbital rockets Falcon 9, Falcon Heavy, and Starship, has now surpassed 100 launches for the year, showcasing unquestionable dominance. Falcon 9 surpassed last year's record of 91 launches in late September and is now on track to reach 100 launches, perhaps as soon as this week. Afterward, it is expected to achieve up to 148 launches in the remaining two months, although this goal may be harder to meet after having a few delays in the past. Falcon 9's sibling, Falcon Heavy, continues to maintain its reliability. While it doesn't launch as frequently, each mission is impressive. It has launched 11 times so far, with every mission a success. The most recent was NASA's Europa Clipper mission, further adding to Falcon Heavy's impressive track record. With these two rockets, SpaceX has dominated the industry, making Europe dependent on its services for many years. Now that dependence is likely to grow as Starship, the vehicle mentioned earlier by ESA executives, achieves rapid and impressive progress. In just over a year, SpaceX has mastered the process of reaching orbit, landing the booster with the Megazilla arm, and is aiming for even more ambitious goals. The launch rate will continue to rise following the success of Flight 5, and remember, Starship's capabilities, such as its large payload capacity and full reusability, make it highly competitive. This has led to its selection for many critical missions, including Artemis and Mars colonization efforts. It wouldn't be surprising if Europe comes to rely on Starship even more than on Falcon rockets. The common factor across SpaceX's orbital fleet is reusability, both partial and full. This key advantage sets SpaceX apart from the rest, including Europe. Once again, SpaceX's superiority in the industry is unmistakable, setting a new standard that others struggle to meet. Its relentless innovation and unmatched launch cadence have solidified its dominance in the aerospace industry, leaving competitors far behind. For years, the company has successfully utilized its Falcon rockets to achieve a remarkable level of efficiency and reliability in reaching orbit, setting new standards in the sector. With the introduction of Starship, SpaceX's leading position is set to become even more pronounced. This next-generation spacecraft, boasting impressive performance metrics and ambitious designs, is expected to revolutionize space travel, enhancing payload capacity and mission versatility.
Starship will not only reinforce SpaceX's advantages, but also usher in a new era of space exploration. Despite SpaceX's significant lead, strong competition is still anticipated in the industry. Surpassing SpaceX may seem daunting, but the spirit of innovation and competition is crucial for advancing space exploration. Organizations worldwide, including those in Europe, are making strides in their own programs, striving to maintain a competitive edge and open new pathways for humanity's understanding of the universe. Under SpaceX's leadership, space exploration is becoming more accessible than ever, paving the way for scientific endeavors, commercial opportunities, and international collaborations. The future is bright, full of possibilities, and we are on an exciting journey into the cosmos. With each launch and milestone achieved, we draw closer to fulfilling humanity's long-held dreams of exploration. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Thank you so much for tuning in, and as always, this has been Kevin from Great SpaceX. Until next time, keep looking up.